right. Uh, Aminadab, we still got like 10 minutes before this lecture is supposed to be over. Uh, Aminadab asked me a question. He said, um, so, so there's a story with Rabbi Shemai. And he's not a rabbi, once again. He is a rabbi, but he's not called Rabbi Shemai. Yeah, I keep doing that. It was a mistake. Shemai. Uh, so this convert, it's a very great story. This convert comes to Shemai. And he says, uh, convert me under the condition that you're going to teach me the whole Torah while I'm one foot. Get the heck out of here! Boom! He kicked him out of there. He says, oh, he, get, he got a broom and he started sweeping him out. You know? he, he broomed him out of there. <laughs> He's like, then he came to Hillel and he says, convert me to Judaism and teach me the whole Torah while you stand on one foot. Hillel was up for the challenge. Why? He was modest and humble. Easy going. That which is hateful to you, do not do unto others. That's the whole Torah on one foot. Amen. The rest is commentary. Okay. I converted him. Nice. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so there's another story of another convert. And I talked about this last time I was here. And he comes to Shammai and says, Shammai, I want you to convert me under the condition that I'm going to be the high priest. Mm-hmm. Right, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Because he's not born of the family of Cohen. Okay? There's a story of this uh, Jew, and he came to a rabbi. He says, Rabbi, I want to be a Cohen. And the rabbi's like, Okay, well, you know, and he started studying laws of Cohenism. He says, but he, he said, you know, you can't be a Cohen. Well, why not? I said, well, come back tomorrow. And so he comes back, Rabbi, I want to be a Cohen. And he, the rabbi's like, well, you really can't be a Cohen. And, and he showed him why in the Torah. And he says, Rabbi, I don't understand why I can't be a Cohen. The next day, Rabbi, please, I just want to be a Cohen. And the rabbi says, why in the world do you want to be a Cohen? He says, because my dad was a Cohen and my grandfather was a Cohen. That's <laughs> um, So he says, convert me under the condition you're going to make me the high priest. So what was Shemaiah's reaction? Get the heck out of here! <laughs> Get the, how, how dare you? Who do you think you are? You want to be the high priest? Well, the reason why he wanted to become the high priest is because he was walking by the synagogue and they were reading the Torah portion in which talks about the high priest clothes. He's like, oh, I want to wear that. <laughs> and so uh, he goes to Hillel and uh, he's like, uh, convert me under the condition that I'm going to be the high priest. And so Hillel says, okay. So he starts off, you know, like, uh, let's study the story of Nadav and Avihu, <laughs> who brought strange fire and fire came down from heaven. And he talked about David and stuff. He's like, uh, I don't want to be a high priest. He says, exactly, and you can't be. The other story, and he converted him in the end. See, Hillel had that ability to take someone who wanted to convert to Judaism for the wrong reasons and turn it around and make them convert to Judaism for the right reasons. <coughs> Shammai wasn't willing to do that. He didn't have time. And then the first convert that came to Hillel, he says, Hillel, I'm sorry, he says to Shammai, uh, Shammai, I, I'm confused. How many Torahs do y'all have in Judaism? Shammai actually answered his question. He didn't kick him out yet. Uh, oh, I just spoiled it. <laughs> uh, we have the written Torah and the oral Torah. And he says, okay, I want to convert under the condition that uh, I'm only going to be converted on the written Torah. Right. What was Shammai's reaction? Get out! Get out! <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> so he goes to Hillel, and he's like, uh, Hillel, I want you to convert me under the condition that I'm only going to be under the authority of the written, written law. Hillel says, okay, come to class tomorrow. So Hillel is like, uh, he taught them, uh, live. Bad, gimel, dalit, and that's it. So he taught him four letters because in order to read the written Torah, you need to know Hebrew, right? So he said, This is Aleph, and this is Bad, and this is Gimel. Uh huh, okay, all right, that's, okay, that's easy. And this is Dalit, okay, all right. <laughs> Next day. All right, uh, Bad, Aleph, Dalit, Gimel. He says, Wait, wait a second. Yesterday, you told me that this letter was Bet, 
And this letter was Gimel, and this letter was a doll. And now you're telling me that this letter is doll, and this letter is Gimel. He would like mix them up. He says, oh, really? Okay, come back tomorrow. He did it in even more worse. He said, this was Gimel. He's like, what? Yeah. The day before it was bad. The day before that it was doll. And now you're telling me it's Gimel? He said, see, you have to trust me, right? You have to trust me that I'm teaching you Hebrew correctly, right? And that's the oral Torah. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> so that, 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 that's the story. And so he converted him, and he learned that you have to have oral Torah in order to have written Torah. So. And something that you opened my eyes to was, um, in, in a general way of saying was, because I used to reject the Talmud as well, and the Mishnah and all that stuff, because uh, I was taught right. <laughs> yeah. And um, what I came to realize was that for me to reject the Talmud itself, or the Mishnah, but I choose to use the strongest concordance and all these other aids and helps, I've rejected one Talmud for another. Yeah. So right. why not take the Talmud right. that was original rather than the replacements who think they know it all? So like, a, a sentence, you said it, and you know, you rephrase what I taught you, yeah. is that if you use a lexicon, yeah. well, you just turn the lexicon into your own Talmud. Because mm-hmm. right. 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 I mean, the lexicon is telling you this word means this, this means yeah. that. How do you know this word means this? Here's one of my favorite examples. Is it says, circumcise your son on the eighth day. Mm-hmm. Okay? What? Circumcise your son's foreskin. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, we all know what that is, right? Or do we? What's the Hebrew word for foreskin? Orla. Orla. Just in the Hebrew Bible alone, there are five definitions of the word orla. Heart, something that covers the heart, something that covers the ear, something that covers the mouth, the foreskin, and a fruit that's on a tree that's forbidden to eat. So how do you know that God meant the foreskin on on the male private part? You can't know from written Torah alone. Because the word in its in the own Bible itself, you open up a lexicon, you'll see these definitions. Earlobe, lips, heart, foreskin, and forbidden fruit of a tree. So you can't know from the written Torah alone. But how do we know that we have been doing it correctly for the last 3,500 years? Because I can go to any locker room in Israel and see for myself what the meaning was. Because their father circumcised them, and their grandfather circumcised their fathers, and their great-grandfather circumcised their grandfathers. And it goes all the way back to Moses, we think. But we have no other way of knowing. We can only rely on the tradition. That is oral law. How do we know that this is Aleph, this is Bet, this is Gimel, this is Dalet? Because your parents taught you the Aleph Bet. Or a teacher taught you the Aleph Bet. You're accepting their authority. So that's the meaning of that story. Any questions about the pre-seminar lecture? Any comments? Please, anybody. I, I kind of would like to ask the part we had in the paragraph, not up there now, but I remember it saying that the, the halal is the one that got the faith. Right. It was from a voice. The voice from heaven? How much studying is there available on that voice? What do you mean? From heaven. What do you mean? I mean, is it just a one-liner? Or is there really some study into in depth on the voice from heaven, or is everybody is just assuming that that, that was the So, a voice, it's called a bot kol in Hebrew. And you can, if you can get a Talmudic dictionary or a Talmudic encyclopedia, look up bot kol, and it will give you every instance in the Talmud that a voice from heaven came out. Now, I said here, and this is my thing, is that a voice from heaven didn't really come down. Right. Um, ever since it's only a, like a story a, 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 you know a story to teach something like like the the like the the boy who cried wolf did that story ever happen but the moral of the story is true so the boy who cried wolf is a true story but only because the moral is true not because there was an actual wolf and a boy crying wolf or the little red riding hood trying to teach you not to to be too kind or to be too familiar with strangers, right? Did, did the story of Little Red Riding Hood actually happen? No. If the moral is true. Yeah. Okay? So, um, so a voice coming from heaven, I don't know if that's literally true, like that's actually happened or not. I think it's not literal. Uh, it's just trying to teach that from God's point of view, 
They're both right. It's because the kindly and the meek one is going to win out over the one that... Yeah, that so okay. on Mount Sinai, when God gave the Ten Commandments, the whole crowd was like, oh, we're going to die. And they went to Moses, and they said, we don't want God to speak to us anymore. We don't want to hear His voice from heaven. We would prefer you to talk with God and you just tell us what God says. They were accepting Moses' authority and, and they trusted Moses to give them what God said. And ever since then, voices from heaven don't happen. Right. Like from Mount Sinai. If, if, or if you have time before the evening ends tonight, but if you could do a, a, a one-foot example of Buckeye 7, that would be a really good... No, it'll take me too long. Okay. It'll take me too long. So, um, I talked about that last time. That, that, was, that was probably the best example I've heard that really made it more clear. So, you, does that answer your question? Sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's an encyclopedia of the Talmud that talks about the bot call and, and what it means. Is it an angel's voice? Is it, is it a whisper? What is a bot call? Yeah. And there, there's debate about How it. How do you spell that? Uh, bot is like daughter, yeah. bot, right. and kol is a uh, voice, kol, bot, bot kol. And it's trans- it means the daughter of a voice, literally. Bot, kol. Okay, bot kol, it's, a, it's the daughter of a voice, or whatever that means. So, but it, it's translated as a heavenly voice. Okay, any last comments or questions about the lecture? Any, any, anything, really. Okay. I look forward. We're next. We're gonna. We're gonna get deep in the next lecture with the hard stuff. We have a 45 minute break, according to the syllabus. So actually, a 30 minute break. Introduction and so forth. Thank you.